Hi there, so today I'm going to be giving you the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make this lovely crinoline hat wire molded fascinator. Yes, the whole names run up together because it consists of all these various things in one. I actually have this video up in various sections in two parts, but most people have been unable to locate the second part. And each time I keep on getting, please, can you show us how to mold? Can you show us how to mold it? As you can see, I had it um, some months ago. It keeps on going up to two months, two years ago. So it means it started since when I put it up till now, people are still requesting. So I decided, let me join it together so that you would have the full view and um, it will help you out not to start searching for the various um for the two parts you get it in one so i hope this meets someone that needs this on time and it also inspires you that you're watching to create lovely great designs and i would love to see them you can send me a message on the Ventcraft academy because that's our reception link in the description below and just send me what you have made after watching this i would love to see it all right and if you still if you watch this on sunday which is the 22nd of october i'm actually running half price on all the classes in the Ventcraft academy you don't want to miss that so i'll keep quiet right now enjoy the video and get empowered to create world so you've been eating this mold this is our mold made of wood okay and your pad or worthing or interfacing it's the thickest softest part that's the best i can describe it then you'll be needing your top bun forgive the video it was taking things out forgive it not me it <laughs> then that's the oil based vaseline hair cream that's a bowl for mixing then your nylon bag okay then you'll be needing water of course that's water then scissors i just took that out <laughs> then your thumb nails yeah so let's get cooking so the first thing you want to do is cover your mold with nylon whatever type of nylon the aim is so that your mold doesn't spoil because of water you know wood and water don't really mix together so that's why we're covering it like so so I want to shift up, shift that um, thing there, yeah, so that I don't have it where I want to mold. Okay, you could use um, uh, what they call it, nylon fill or what they call that thing. Different any kind of nylon can be used. Okay, so that's me tying it and easing up that place so that it can move well. Then you use your oil base, just like when you want to bake. If you want it to come out, you have to put butter, isn't it? So we here we use oil base, hair cream, Vaseline. Okay. Okay, so I've cut out my bridal satin and the pad. Now let me show you how I measured that. Now if you measure the mold, the parts you want to cover, remember this is a partially covered mold, it was nine. So I added one inch more, that is 10. This is showing you how to cover your mold partially. Okay, so the next thing I do is take my top bond and I'm gonna bring out the quantity I feel will be enough for the mold. With practice, you'll get to know what quantity does well for you. And if it's not enough while you're making, you could always add and mix again. Now, some of you ask the question that why do I use top bond instead of um, stiffener? Now, you know, when you're dealing with pad, pad takes a lot of, um, it's, it needs a lot of liquid to soak in well. And so, to me, I feel it's more economical if I use top bond. If I use them um, stiffener, <laughs> I'll use quite a, no uh, quite a number, quite a quantity to be able to mold with pads. So that's why I use stiffener. I feel it's less expensive and it does the job perfectly well for me. Um, so that's why I use it. Okay, so I've answered that question. So when you put in your water, you want to make sure that you turn it and make sure that there are no... Um, what you call it um, it's smooth it's smooth it um, dissolves perfectly well before you start molding so you don't have white marks on your on your bridal satin the one that you put on that now another thing also some people don't you mix like this they rub it and tap but that doesn't work well for me this is what I found works well for me so as I always say there are a lot of ways to 
do things. You find which one works best for you. I should start thinking of using gloves, right? I don't know. I just like getting my hands into the business. You get what I mean? Okay. All right. So we've finished mixing it up and now I'm turning the bridal satin into the mixed top bond and I squeeze it. I notice when I squeeze it, I don't get to see the whitish thing underneath the heart. Do you understand? It cleans it up when I squeeze it like so. It makes it look neat underneath. Okay. So you get your mold that you have covered and now you're going to ensure check to see which part is the shining part is the part that is smooth on your hand now that is the part that is going to face down so that when you look underneath the heart you see the smooth shining surface the rough surface will be up, up where you're going to put your pad so now i'm dipping in my pad into the mixed top bond now that's why i do it like this because i feel when it's liquid and you mix it up it touches every area but when you have to tap and rub I feel it won't get into every area, but with this, you're sure to get into it. And I squeeze also like so, so that I know that the liquid pours through and touches every part. But don't squeeze too much, just lightly. Do you understand? Just lightly, okay? And yeah, that's it. So that's the reason why I do my chance so I have to touch everywhere. Then I place it like so. Okay, so we're going to go into our shouting mood. Are you ready? What do you say? Not. That's it. That is our not. <laughs> South. East. Okay, that East doesn't want to enter. Yeah, that's true. Why we're waiting for East to enter. You know, you can also use hammer. It's just that I've always worked with my hands on this, but there are some issues when you have to get the hammer and you hammer it in. You take it in. So if you're unable to do it, because this part is quite tough. Okay, that's West is going in. The part is quite tough, so if you can't push it in, please do get a hammer and push it in. Family. Okay, so can you see how I'm doing my hand movement? That's what you're going to be doing to all the corners to ensure that your mold comes out smooth. You get it? So just keep watching and learning. Before this part, did you even notice that my voice went somehow? Um, it was the adult premium. It changed my voice into a man's voice. I had to do some tweaking here and there, remove some cash bags. All right, let's get back to our training. So keep watching and learning. And remember to stay to the very end of the video. Remember, there is a reward for those who watch to the end. Not for everybody, Sha, but fastest fingers first. Please do like this video if you have gained value from this training of today. Just give me a thumbs up, click the thumbs up button below this video. Thank you. And also, I've been putting links on the previous videos that I have on how you can purchase what was used in the DIY. So you want to check those videos and look in the description below and purchase what you require. Thank you. I'm sure you've gotten the hang of it. So let's speed up the process. Okay, so you're going to take this out on the sun once you're done putting all your thumbnails inside thumb pins. You take it and leave it under the sun. For part, it takes longer than cinnamon, princess material, paper mat to dry. I think this took me like four days, and that's because of the weather anyway, because it's um, still raining. If not for that, if it's sunny, probably like two, three days, but this was about four days that it took to dry up. And if you need to speed up the process, sometimes once it's a bit partially dry, you may need to um, bring it out from the mold and put it under the sun so that it will then dry faster. But that's after it has dried a bit too, as in it's kind of strong already. Don't do it when it's still and um, very wet. Okay, so that's it. So when you finish that, you would see how it turns out very soon. Okay, so that's it. It has dried after four, four Four days I think now it's time to take off the thumbnails now that's the way I take it off with a cutter 
you can use a knife also or spoon the head of the spoon so if you're done with that you just remove it like so it comes out so easily and that's it looking so lovely this is my wonderful quarter all right then b6000 then we have uhu gum sorry about the video they're all going up yush then flowers i also made use of a flower that i made myself that's measurement tape and this is my bias okay then that's how the hat wire comes this is how it comes normally wrapped up like that okay so this is already wrapped uh hat wire that we're going to be making use of to make the one of the layers that's peg this is the crinoline that has already been sewn with bias if you check the link below of this of this video you would see the description part you will see how to the link to show you how to sew with bias now this material is called padded where i am i don't know what it's called in your side then we have our needle and thread of course the thread has to match what we're working with then these are straight scissors then candle gum with the electric glue gun okay so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're gonna get a round curve on the molded pad so what we're going to do is we're going to use chalk and a measurement tape so i'm measuring um four inches all the way around so that it's going to be a perfect circle so i'm using my chalk and measurement tape to do that now this idea of um, molding like this actually would assist you when you have probably a lot of um orders to do on probably a small a small mold and you don't have enough of that small mold but you have big molds that have the crown at that shape so you can just mold them mold like this and then cut like so okay so once i'm done with that i'm going to use my scissors and cut the way around to get my smaller molded pad pad molded the fascinator okay all right <laughs> anyway whichever one so this is how we go about making the tripod layer fascinator so keep watching and learn and as usual you would want to stay to the very end of this video because most of my videos they do have at the last part a competition or something to get something free and I think this particular one has So if you remember I actually showed you this particular one hat wire the silver one that we're going to be using but no because the molded fascinator is small we're going to be making use of the bronze hat wire now that one is more malleable so the first thing we do is to unwrap those um, um sellotape which I've just done now I'm unwrapping the wire you, you just twist it round just follow the way it's wrapped Sometimes it's twisted round, sometimes it's just um, put straight and it's much easier. But this one was twisted round, so I'm trying to get it all out to so the extent of what I would need to put on the molded pad. So this is how you're going to be sewing it on the fastening, on the molded pad. You're going to attach it like that and take your needle and thread and start sewing it to the rim of your molded pad now this um, particular method of doing it now if you if someone gives you a design and you see that the rim there's either a bias or there's another material that is there most times it's most possible that this was what was done it was not the when it was molded the material was not put underneath do you understand it was cut at the corners and so you have to use something else to put at the rim i hope you understand what i just said okay keep watching and learning so i'll be back to show you how this finishes up in the meantime let's move over to the next layer of our triple layer fascinator material we want to use to cover it in this case I'm making use of padded material so you squeeze it like so um, using the hot wire length I'm using is a yard you can make use of any um, of the quantity you want to use depending on what you want to achieve
okay so when you're making use of solid material the one that is not light like a veil I uh, see through you squeeze you know normally we twist it but in, if you twist for a solid material it will be difficult for you to pass your material through so you just squeeze it till you get the desired design you want take your matching thread and begin to sew so this is how we make the second layer of our triple layer fascinator so keep watching and learning If you're gaining value from this video so far, please do give me a thumbs up. You see that thumb that is raised up down below this video? Just click it and let me know that you are gaining value and encourage me to put out more videos. Keep watching and learning. So after you have cut out the SS, you sew it again to ensure it doesn't lose it. You don't want to cry. <laughs> Once it loses, now nah, you know it's hard work. <laughs> Alright then, keep watching and learning. okay so back to our first layer of our triple layer fascinator now we are covering the last part of the hot wire and I take my lovely gutter and cut it off like so now just in case you're unable to follow up in this particular um, um, clip please do check the description below because I've done this process before so I'm making this a bit quicker because um, this video is actually turning out to really be lengthy. I guess with the name Triple Layer Fascinator, it's giving me a triple run for the size of this video. Okay, so we got to do some triple running in what we're doing. So the next thing we do is take our elastic band, chop out two inches with our scissors, not a knife, and then we sew it to the fasten molded fascinator like so. All right, so keep watching. And learning. Please don't forget you do the other side. I'm just doing one side so you'll be able to know how to do the other side yourself. Alright, so let's move over to the next feet. So that's how you do the next side. Okay, so now this is the part. Are you ready to shout with me? I hope you are. If you're a subscriber and you've watched this before, you know where we're going to. Okay, so you put your uhu gum around the rim like so. Oh, I'm so excited. And the next thing we're going to do is what? Nuts, south, east, and west. Did you shout with me? Oh. Give yourself a clap. All right. So then we squeeze down the rest. Okay. So let's move on. Okay. Now we move over to a third layer of the triple layer fascinator. So I've done one um, one part. Now I'm showing you how you tie up the edges of the crinoline. Now I'm making use of two and a half inches and have already sewn the bias round the crino line. If you want to know how to do that, please do check the description of the link below. The next thing you do is to start pleating the crino line like so. Okay, keep watching and then. Okay, once you're done, you sew it up together. Now, if you want the pleats more, of course, you increase the inches of the crinoline that you made use of. Keep watching and then. Okay. 
Now off to put the three triple layered fascinator, the three layers of the triple layered fascinator together. So the first thing we do is take the first layer and the second layer and we're going to sew it like so. Before you do this you would have gotten to know where exactly how you want the layer to appear by testing it on your mannequin head or someone's head. Now for this particular work you must have eaten well because you know it's part you're passing the needle to and they can be really strong at times. Okay so the way I sew it is when I'm taking it from underneath I sew it close to the thread that I just brought out so under is not totally stained with um, um, thread and all that. Okay so keep watching and learning. Okay, I'm done with that very soon and I take the third layer of my triple layer fascinator and attach just at that place. You see all the um, places that I sewed up there. I'm going to attach that third layer on top of it like so. Can you see? Just watch and see where I put it just close to it right there and I'm going to do my sewing also there. Ensure as I said you have eaten well. Alright, keep watching and learning. Okay, that done. The next thing I'm going to do is take the rows I made now. We have Fascinator Class 3, I think. Is it 2? Two? 2. Okay, yeah, 2. That we made this in the Vent Craft Academy. So if you don't know how to make this, you can go to the description of this video and click on the Vent Craft Training Reception and you'll be directed to where you can learn how to make this beautiful rose. Now the reason I do make my roses myself is so that my work will come out looking unique. You don't want to have the same roses everybody's having using on their fascinator. No, you want to stand out. So that's the whole idea. Okay, so keep watching and learning. Now I hope you know how I'm sewing the rose to the fascinator. I'm taking a piece from the rose and taking it like that. Just keep watching and then I'm sure you get a hang of it. So I'm going to do this all the way around. Okay, so that done. That's the finishing touches. I'm going to tie my thread now. And after that I'm going to take these small roses that I showed you before and I'm going to put them at the side. Now what I did was to try and see if I could get similar rows designed so that the two sides would look the same. So I'm going to be taking Uhu gum and attaching them there just three making them look beautiful and nice. So keep watching and learning.
Okay, so I'll just be showing you how I'm putting it on one side, but I did it on both sides. Okay, so that's how it looks so you do the same on the other side so now we're done with that now can you see how the back looks you can hardly see the thread but little is shown so what I'm going to do I cut out some trimmings from the material itself in the shape of the flowers of what I see there and I'm going to use that to cover up just to dot 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 that has showing of the thread so that it looks very neat underneath all right so keep watching and learning Now that's how you make your triplet layer fascinating. Look you once more for staying with me till the very end. Till my next video comes out, stay tuned and God bless.